This video is brought to you by Brilliant. We are as productive as the tools that we use. Although this is very true for professionals like being a chef or a surgeon or a mechanic, this is just as true for many of us who work from home. The regular people, the email generation, the Excel gurus, the Zoom grandmasters. Aside from the computer that we use and the input devices, the most essential tech that can make or break someone's momentum is the monitor, the window to the World Wide Web as I'd like to call it. So today we're going to be talking about the best work from home productivity monitor choices. Note that I said the word productivity, so hardcore gamers, please back off. Oh, I, I almost forgot. I'll share my monitor recommendations towards the end of this video. How do we choose the best monitor for our workspace? Let's start with the aspect ratio. There are three popular ratios that we should care about. The most popular being 16 by nine. Typically that aspect ratio comes in three popular sizes, 24 inches, 27 and 32. Next is 21 by nine aspect ratio, which are monitors called ultra wides like this one and come in popular sizes of 29, 34 and 38 inches. Finally, there are the super ultra wides that are usually 43 inches and even 49. For most people, chances are that 16 by nine ratio will be more than enough. It is the absolute gold standard and many will find it ideal and balanced for most types of computer work. Of course, some might want to jump ship to an ultra wide. I did that recently. Ultra wide real estate can significantly boost productivity because we are talking about 30% more display. Such displays usually help people who deal with many windows that hold a large amount of information like spreadsheets or creative people who use software with a lot of interface tools and control panels. I, for example, find the ultra wide ideal for video editing because with it, I can spread my editing timeline and have an extensive preview of the video while keeping all my color correction tools and others and audio meters even visible at all times. Think of the ultra wide as the more conservative and less distracting option of a dual screen setup. The super ultra wide, on the other hand, are for the enthusiasts, if you ask me. We are talking about monitors that can fit at least four apps side by side, exactly like having two 16 by nine displays. These monitors are niche and very cool and might be the perfect alternative to a dual display setup, which I'll go over in a second. Still, they might be too much to handle for many, including me. I've worked on dual monitor setups and even triple monitor setups. I've worked on ultra wides, on giant displays, and here's what I've learned so far. Even in my line of work, which revolves around graphic design and web design as well, and video editing, 16 by nine has always been good enough to do all my work. Multiple monitor setups have always been too distracting for me. I've always found them off balance because I don't have an anchor point display. It's either one or the other. The bezel in the middle was always an annoyance and I could never find the perfect position or angle for such setup. Should one monitor be center and the other one on the side? Or is it better to be on the bottom and the other on the top? Further, the need for that second monitor has always accounted for about 10% of my work, maybe even less. The rest of the time that monitor has always served as a wallpaper uh, or giant picture frame or screensaver to blast yet more blue light on my face. Of course, I don't want to disregard professional streamers and gamers and editors that do require multiple uh, monitor setups. Still, the average consumer will be okay with a single monitor 90% of the time. The ultra wide recently, especially a curved one like this, turned out to be the missing spice in my productivity recipe. The additional 30% of real estate was enough to fill any interface gaps and boost my efficiency significantly. And I'm not joking, apps no longer needed to live in separate desktop spaces and app tools that I had learned to reveal and hide on demand were now part of the workflow. I mentioned curvature on a monitor on purpose. I've always found flat ultra wide displays distracting since the corner information is already too far away and most of all too off axis for my taste. Something that, you know, curved displays have successfully fixed over the last few years. The slight curvature is enough to eliminate the weirdness around the corners. So think 16 by nine and perhaps 
on ultra wide if your software can take advantage of it. If you can, it will be just like having a giant browser with white space and some narrow content in the middle. Now, let's talk about size. When it comes to 16 by nine, and it's three sizes, there's only one size that I can recommend, and that is 32 inches. And I know this sounds weird now, but think of it this way. Back in the day, I had bought the best CRT monitor there was, which was the biggest and flattest 17 inch Sony. At that time, 17 inches was like 43 inches today. In my opinion, 32 inches today are the popular 27 inches of before. And there is a reason for that. We spent more and more time in front of those monitors. And the smaller the monitor, the biggest the pressure on our vision. 32 inches in 16 by nine is very relaxing on the eyesight, especially in good resolution. And it is a size that can be kept at a decent you know, distance without having to you know, peer with your eyes trying to focus on some text. 32 inches are also great for home use because the monitor can be used for entertainment as well. I've used 43 inches for a long time too, and all that thing should be, you know, good two meters away from my face. It was really a joy to not have to focus hard on some eight point fonts. I'm not disregarding 27 inches and even 24, given the fact that the new iMacs come in 24 inch sizes, but this is a place when it's time to talk about resolution, because besides your physical home workspace and how far the monitor is from your face, the display resolution is the next factor that can determine your monitor size. Picture quality is a passionate topic for me. It is often disregarded by many people, but the way I see it is this. In 2021, we use affordable smartphones with better displays than the main monitors, where 300 pixels per inch is something standard to enjoy, you know, in your hands. In the meantime, many people go to work and spend over 150 hours a month on an ugly flickering display with less than 100 pixels per inch and they wonder why they're depressed. I know this sounds ironic, but it's actually true. I think that we should use the best tools that we can when we talk about our livelihood. The best viewing experience comes after 110 pixels per inch. So this should be your aim. At this pixel per inch ratio, you get plenty of screen space and sharp details without having to use any scaling. If you're wondering, an excellent example of this would be a 27 inch 4K display with around 160 PPI. Also, this is a good moment to mention the four types of monitors that you can come across in terms of panel technology. They are TN, VA, IPS, and OLED. TN panels are the worst when it comes to viewing angles and image quality. Although they usually have the fast response times and are the least expensive ones, I urge you to avoid them. VA panels, like my recently reviewed Samsung M7, are an excellent compromise to IPS because they have great contrast and vibrant colors for a reasonable price. However, you can still expect questionable viewing angles. OLED, on the other hand, are too expensive to use as monitors, although they are great for small screens like, you know, our, our smartphones. Potential burn-ins uh, on the screen and a hole in your pocket are reasons to avoid them. This leaves the good old IPS technology as a keyword when you're doing your research. IPS monitors provide great viewing angles and great picture quality for a fair price. Next, don't neglect connectivity and features. A more expensive monitor with better I.O. in the back can cost more at first. Still, it can potentially save you more money from buying hubs and dogs and dongles. In the world of Thunderbolt and USB-C, try and find a monitor that can power your laptop if you're using a laptop and run as a hub via a single USB-C cable. This will make your setup very clean and open potential for other people around the house like I do at home. My wife and I use one monitor that uses USB-C to power and run as a hub for her PC and my Mac and we usually, you know, don't overlap. With clever accessories, you might need just an SD card dongle to turn your monitor into the ultimate floating docking station. When making a purchase, look for USB-C with a Thunderbolt, additional USB ports as a standard and an audio port as well. 
Built-in speakers are welcome, but no matter your monitor choice, you cannot expect excellent audio, but somewhat less than average. On the other hand, a base amount on the back is something to look for too, although unless you go very budget, I'm not sure about a modern display that doesn't have uh, this amount on the back. Anyway, with it, you can quickly get rid of the standard, in most cases, plastic and ugly stand and, you know, float your display while having the flexibility to move it around any way you want. Having the option for the monitor to power your laptop will also leave your power brick available to station at another location or office. Talking about power, would you like to discover what powers the devices around you? What makes your monitor and smartphone and even your toaster work? Today's video sponsor, Brilliant, can help you learn that with their electricity and magnetism class. Inspired by Maxwell's field equations, which tell us how electricity and magnetic fields operate, this Brilliant course is excellent for learning the physical laws that allow our tech to perform its functions, like charging and running picture from your laptop via a single monitor cable. Like this, of course, Brilliant provides other courses with storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problems to solve, helping you master technical subjects and think more like an engineer using critical reasoning skills. To support the channel and sign up for free, go to brilliant.org forward slash this is E. And by the way, the first 200 people to upgrade with this link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription, which is what I use. Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. Okay, a lot of symbols and numbers are coming up. So here are my favorite monitor recommendations. These are products that have been thoroughly tested over the years and are easy to recommend. And I do have separate reviews for some of them. So I'll make sure to link them below. So when it comes to a 27 inch size, a perfect budget option is LG's 27U L550, which is a 4K monitor that has a similar display panel to the higher end monitors, and it comes at a price below 400 bucks. The downside of this display is the lack of good connectivity and charging. Still, the price tag and the color representation make it worthwhile to check out. We're talking about IPS technology. A better alternative in that same size would be Dell P2721Q, which offers fantastic design and plenty of ports, including 65 watt charging at a price of around 570 US dollars. Going up to my favorite 32 inch size, a budget recommendation would be the Wicked Samsung M7. Although this display is not IPS, but a VA panel, for about 350 bucks, you get thin bezels, 32 inches, 4K, built-in speakers, crazy smart features, remote control, USB-C charging, and much more. A better alternative to the M7, although less extravagant, is LG 32UN880, also known as Ergo. This monitor comes with built-in desk monitor arm with cable management that looks sick. This display has plenty of ports, including 60 watts USB-C charging and much more. For 700 bucks, it is worth shortlisting it. For the productivity junkies, my only recommendation is the LG 38WN95C Ultrawide Monster, which is the one that I use. This is the ultimate display that works great as a productivity beast and as an immersive gaming monitor. We are talking about curved 38 inch nano IPS Ultrawide with Thunderbolt 3, 144 Hz, DCI-P3, one millisecond response time and QHD resolution. No wonder this monitor has been ranked as the number one ultra wide in the US three years in a row. I'll be sure to leave other good recommendations below. I might even talk further about choices in my bi-weekly newsletter, which you can sign up for right up there or in the description below. You might find my how to set up your productive home workspace video also helpful if you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, feel free to list them below or ping me on Twitter. On the other side, I will place a link to my monitor playlist as well, where you can check out some of my individual reviews. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out. <laughs>